Hello, JP here. Today I'm doing a review on Creality's 22 Watt Falcon 2 Pro laser cutter. Now I've always wanted a laser cutter, but have been on the fence as to which affordable model would be the one to go for, as there is so much choice these days. So when Creality reached out and offered us a Falcon 2 Pro laser cutter, I was very happy to give it a go. The Falcon 2 Pro model that I will be talking about is the 22 watt version. There is also a 40 watt model of the same machine available, both marked as the Pro, as they are an evolution of Creality's previous models that also now include a sliding protective top cover as standard. Now, I've worked on projects before where we've had laser cutting and engraving done by outside companies, and I've always assumed that the relatively new consumer level machines could not match the same quality. But since those jobs mainly involved thinner cutting work to wood and acrylic material, I was keen to see exactly how capable this machine would be in comparison. But first, we must assemble the machine. Like many products of this type, the Falcom 2 Pro requires part assembly to complete its configuration before any work can be started. Thankfully, this is fairly straightforward, although I did not rate the instruction manual very highly as it was mostly picture-based, and those pictures did not have many detailed close-ups of certain components, or exactly how some pieces were meant to fit together, but it was adequate enough to get by, even when your dog decides to take it away and shred it. The manual and other setup guides can also be found on a supplied micro SD card that comes with the machine. Now I recommend following one or more instruction videos found on YouTube, as they are a lot more straightforward to follow. I've included the links to all the videos that I found most helpful in setup and operation of this machine in the description text of this video. So we are all built, let's take a look at some of the features of this machine. We have a separate air pump that attaches to the machine that feeds the diode laser for cooling that has nice rubber sprung feet that help minimize noise when placed on a table or flat surface. There is a retractable transparent cover that provides added safety and eye protection. The bottom drawer or crumb tray opens out for easy removing waste material after cutting and there are a few nice safety features including an emergency stop button, power key switch and two magnetic contact switches so that the machine can only operate when the top cover is fully closed and level. Not that you should leave this machine unattended when it's in use mind you, but the machine does feature overheating and fire sensors and will automatically shut down if it detects too much internal heat or smoke. I'm using the machine inside my house with the extractor hose feeding out through a cat flap for the fumes to escape. During the cutting of wood or acrylic, you can smell it, but the extractor does a great job of dissipating any fumes or smells very quickly. I must admit, I was a bit wary at first when I saw the amount of components to assemble and the sheer size of the thing. I also knew that I would have to learn some new software to control it, so I really wasn't very excited when getting everything up and running. For some reason, it wasn't like my first time experience with a 3D printer where that felt a bit more fun to set up and learn all about. After installing Lightburn, which is the control software that everyone online seemed to recommend, I was guided through the process of setting up the machine and calibrating its internal camera. The Falcon 2 Pro has an overhead camera that is built into the inside top cover of the machine. Once calibrated, it allows for accurate positioning of material and to see where the laser is located at any one time. I really like this feature and found it to be most useful. I just wish the camera was of higher quality for monitoring and seeing a clearer image for material placement. It is basically a small webcam, but it still does the job well. Fortunately, the Lightburn software is quite easy to use and there are lots of useful tutorial videos on YouTube about getting set up. I would have liked to have seen the full software come with the machine as included, but it's not. So this is an added expense to consider for a new user, unless you are happy to use a free software alternative that has more limited features. I was a little bit hesitant in trying anything ambitious for my first cut, as I still felt like the whole process of setup was a bit too much of a hassle. I think my enthusiasm took a big hit because I really didn't have a project in mind to use it on. But then I remembered a project that I've always wanted to do, 
and that was to make a recreation of the opening landscape shot of Hades from the movie Blade Runner. I had long since known that the large shooting miniature employed forced perspective miniatures and hundreds of photo etch cutouts to create an amazing sense of scale and depth to the landscape. I put this project on the shelf as I knew by having had photo etch parts made for me in the past, it is a very expensive process, even for very small runs. But then I started thinking, if these cutouts could just as easily be made by laser cutting card, then that would make this project, and others I have in mind, to now become viable. So I found an online chart on Creality's website that had a list of recommended settings for cutting and engraving different materials. These settings are basically guides as to what speed and power settings to use for different material types. And I have to say they are pretty accurate and worked very well for me. Lightburn allowed me to configure these settings easily and I was ready to cut some card. For the artwork, I found some images from an online auction that happened a few years ago, which showed a few of these original photo etch pieces used in the movie, and then I <coughs> extracted the shapes using Adobe Illustrator's image trace tool from the auction photographs. This gave me fairly accurate vector line traces of the original parts that I was interested in replicating. Finally, the light bulb in my head lit up and I came to realize the potential that this machine can deliver, at least for my needs, which is predominantly for model making and small prop builds, where being able to cut or etch relatively thin materials are going to be the regular requirement. The 22 watt laser is quite happy in cutting 3mm wood and acrylic and can easily go thicker with a slower speed and perhaps more than one pass. So for me, it is a good balance in terms of power and accuracy for my needs. The 40 watt version is obviously more suited to thicker material and faster speeds, but it also comes bundled with an additional 1.6 watt laser module that can be swapped over to do fine engraving work, which I've seen great results with on other people's YouTube videos. At the time of making this video, Creality is soon to release a new 60 watt version of this machine which will, I'm sure, meet the needs of those who want to cut quicker and thicker. I really like the idea of being able to pick a power increment of a machine like this, and I really like the overall design and especially its safety protection features that they have seemed to carry through the whole Pro line. I now feel enabled to revisit some projects previously put on hold, as well as allow me to make things that previously needed to be outsourced to others. It really is a useful tool that can work in harmony with 3D print projects, for projects where a mixture of 2D laser cut and engraved shapes can be used in conjunction with 3D printed parts to help complete the build. I can now print precision sturdy parts for things like gears for animatronics, etch and cut materials for integrating into miniature set builds, as well as know that at any point I need to fabricate a part with precision, I can rely on this machine. So, should you buy one? Well, if you already know that by having a laser cutter would help you and your making, I can highly recommend the Falcon 2 Pro to be a good choice. Even though I have nothing to compare it to, so far the results have been really great, and I can really see the potential of using it on many projects to come. If 22 watt is not powerful enough for you, maybe consider the 40 watt or the 60 watt version that is soon to be released by Creality. So, that's it. If interested in finding out more about this machine, or Creality and its other range of products, be sure to check out their website for more details. Thank you for watching. Until next time, JP signing off. <laughs>